Sicily is an ancient island filled with stories and myth. Join us as we sail through the famous Stretto di Messina, home of the mythical sea monsters Scylla and Charybdis, watch an opera in the ancient amphitheater of Taormina, and hike up to a vantage point over the Mediterranean Sea. Plus, we provision the boat for the next leg of our adventure. I'm Aladino. I'm both Swiss and Italian, and a boat builder by profession. And I'm Maya, a Canadian artist and sailor. This is our home, Magic Carpet. She's a Vinda 32, though she's only 28 feet long. And four years ago, she fell 20 feet off a crane onto concrete. Insurance wrote her off, but Aladino bought her, fixed her, and now she's our home. Our mission? To sail around the world as slowly as possible. In the last episode, I mentioned the myth of Scylla and Charybdis. These two sea monsters from Greek mythology were said to lurk on either side of the entrance to the Strait of Messina. Sailors trying to avoid one monster would pass too close to the other, falling into inevitable peril. So far, it seemed like Scylla hadn't harmed us, and we were just hoping Charybdis would show us the same kindness. We're just getting ready to leave Scylla. Is that how you say it? Scylla. Chilla. We can't really go through into the Messina until 10. Mm, even further. We're still taking it Even slow. further. So basically right now I think even it's the day with the least strong current. Oh really? It's like one and a half knot we would be motoring against. Oh, okay. So it's no big deal. But, um, but sometimes it can get up to six, can't it? Seven, I heard. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. But that really has to do with the moon phases. So, right now there is almost no current going down. That's the one we will want more. Right now it is against us. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying that we slowly get ready. Uh, Stanca succedente is at 1250. That means when the currents are about equal or uh, let's say none. And picco succedente. Um, is 940 so 940 is the peak of the blue ones coming against us and then it will diminish until 1250 so I thought since now uh, close to the peak it's only one and a half we can slowly get going from Schiller and even if now we might have one knot or even less against us mm -hmm. um, it brings us closer it, it just it's just to get going yeah um, what about the whirlpools? What have you read about those? Oh, those are so cool. Yeah, basically in the other book that I have, and I recommend it, it to you. The only unfortunate thing is that it's all in Italian. Uh, but this is really good uh, book for when you are cruising in Italy. It's all like hand written, written and hand drawn. Imagine like having a local fisherman on board who tells you everything. So in here I found the chapter about the Strait of Messina, specifically also about the whirlpools that can happen because of the currents. But actually what it is saying is that they look scary and uh, yeah, but no worries. Actually they recommend um, head your bow directly into it. And really? Yeah, because that will disrupt the, the, the whirling and the current and it will disappear. Because hmm. um, they're not that strong. So when the currents were ready to accommodate us, we pulled up anchor from the town of Scylla and headed into the legendary Strait of Messina. And apart from looking for currents, whirlpools and traffic, I'm also looking out for a six meter great white. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I know, tell the story. Um, I was reading about fishing in the strait because I'm interested in tuna and swordfish, but I came across many articles uh, that there was a sighting a few years ago and they keep seeing it every year of a five to six meter white shark. Some have uh, filmed it also. And the most recent article was a photo of a big yellow fin tuna which 95% uh, of was missing by just one big bite. So yeah, um, no more swimming for us. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the great white shark, it seems like today the biggest thing to watch out for in Messina are the ferries, which are constantly zipping back and forth across the strait. But with Aladino's careful lookout, we threaded through the fleet of ferries without any problems, heading ever more south to our destination.
To my right is the big city of Messina. We are headed straight to Taormina. The waves were starting to pick up a bit and the boat rolled along. I'm impressed how Maya is still inside working on the Patreon journal. Maya, have a break. I think you should eat something. I actually just finished. Oh, so I'm going to come outside now. Yeah, I'm actually feeling a bit seasick from looking at the screen because it is quite turbulent. That's what I was just saying that uh, I'm amazed by how you're doing in there. Yeah. But yeah, it well is. Well done. It is I wiggling. wrote a cruising guide to the Aeolian Islands. So in case you would also like to support us, it's uh, join us on Patreon and uh, get the extra journals. Also, handwritten letters, uh, give me a call for uh, boating questions, whatever it might be. We did decide to take the sails out and we flew downwind with the waves at our stern. Alright, so we're sailing downwind now. We're through the narrows and past the traffic, so we figured it's a good time to put up the sails. Really confused waters. Yeah, there's a lot of white caps and just like really choppy kind of mixed swell, which I guess is what you get in, in these narrows where there's tides colliding and currents colliding, so. The waves rolled along in short bursts and magic carpet bobbed on top of them, moving along restlessly. Uh, it is getting late afternoon and we're only five nautical miles away from Taormina. We are just arriving in Taormina. Sun is setting, so it's beautiful golden hour light at the moment. Taormina has been a holiday destination for just about 2,000 years. Johannes Brahms, Oscar Wilde, John Steinbeck, and Woody Allen are just some of the more recent famous figures to vacation in this ancient Sicilian city. Built on the cliffs, Tarmina looks over the unparalleled beauty of the Mediterranean. Its gardens, its amphitheater, its lively streets filled with shops selling all manner of delicious Sicilian delicacies all make it a delight for the senses. In many ways, Taormina's history is also Sicily's history. It has been stolen and conquered by countless rulers. It has seen unimaginable war and hardship. Yet it is still beautiful, still surviving, still warm with the smell of citrus fruit and salt. We're waiting the arrival of our friends, uh, Ovi and Cory on Silver Cloud, who we met last year because they're also supposed to be coming to Taormina. We thought we saw their boat coming in, but I don't think it's them, actually. They do have a slow boat, I have to add. <laughs> they do not have Their a slow boat. The boat is 40 feet, and as you know, waterline length makes a boat very slow. <laughs> Dini's a bit jealous. <laughs> Silver Cloud is approaching. So good to see these guys again. Uh, they were just finessing their anchors, and we're just floating around while they do that, giving them the space. I am so happy. Ovi and Corey are coming over for dinner and uh, I just love having dinner parties. When I lived on my little boat in Canada, I had dinner parties with my friends all the time or breakfast parties or lunch parties or just, I always loved having people over for a really nice meal and creating a really nice atmosphere. And uh, we don't get to do that very often right now because we're not around people that we know to invite over as often. Um, so I get to do it tonight and I'm very happy. Our friends arrived and we made them dinner. We didn't film during dinner and just caught up with our friends instead, but we did make lots of plans for the upcoming days. We're doing something very exciting tonight. Yeah. One of the things to see in Taormina is the ancient Greek theater. And it's, yeah, it's exactly how you would expect it to be, kind of this beautiful old crumbling amphitheater with a gorgeous view. We haven't seen it yet, but we've just seen photos. And tonight, it just so happens... From the photos we've seen. Yeah, it's really big. It's a big one. Yeah. Just so happens tonight there is a performance of the opera Carmen in this Greek theater. So of course we're going, and we're bringing Ovi and Cory, our friends uh, who are here in the Anchorage as well, from the States. 
and yeah it's going to be a, a hot hike up there it's quite a hike to get up to the top so I'm just wearing things that I don't mind sweating in and then I have my upper going clothes in my bag yeah yeah I am more sweat proof and wearing my upper clothes yeah he right never now. sweats that's the Italian I do gene sweat, in him but <laughs> The I Canadian gene in me cannot deal with this weather. You don't sweat, you melt. <laughs> yeah, that's true, I melt. We hiked up and up. And now we are hiking up. We arrived early to town and spent time meandering around the gorgeous gardens perched atop Tarmina's cliffs. So we made it up the hill and uh, we wanted to cool off a bit and we found this amazing, amazing garden overlooking the bay. It's just gorgeous. So I'm gonna show you around. The gardens were created by a Scottish noblewoman, Lady Florence Trevelan, who fled Scotland during a scandalous affair. She arrived in Tarmina in 1884 and set about creating a stunning landscape complete with eccentric buildings and lush vegetation. Luckily for all visitors to Tarmina, the gardens became public property in 1922. And then, meandering along Lamplet streets, past shops selling beautiful marzipan fruits and delicious cannoli, we arrived at the theatre and took our seats on the worn stones. We were here to see the opera Carmen. The live orchestra warmed up, people milled about gazing at the incredible theatre setting. The theatre was built by the Greeks and later amended by the Romans and has stood in this same spot for almost two and a half thousand years. Building it required removing 100,000 cubic meters of rock from the mountain, in a time before any sort of power tools. Giant columns, the largest of which are no longer standing, were brought by sea and hauled up the steep cliffs by slaves. It's incredible to think of the effort behind every single stone in this theater. On our final day in Tarmina, we decided to hike inland to the town of Castelmola. Oh, so we are climbing this killer hill for the fourth or fifth time now. Absolutely unbearable under the full sun. We wandered through Tarmina trying to ask directions for how to get inland. Ah, oh, let's try this. So it's actually quite funny. Um, we've asked three or four times now. And the advice that they love giving the most is uh, it's too far and it's too hot and you won't make it. Oh, I'm just asking you where to go. You worry about the other things. But they did tell us and we're on our way. The sun was indeed unbearably hot, and we poured with sweat as we walked. I'm glad we did it though. Looking back, I can vividly remember the views we saw, but the discomfort of the hike is a faded memory. We made it. We are up now in Castelmola, so it refers to a castle, Castello. It was a, it was a pretty steep trail, but the views paid off as always. Quintessential scenes of Italy greeted us, the streets, the hills, the old stone. And so, our time here was nearly complete. Nearly. So we just got back after a very large shopping trip, and we didn't film during the shopping trip because we were just on a mission, and we were so sweaty. You should have seen me. I was just, oh. It was a lot. Um, so basically, we looked on Google, for little shopping centers and base and for the past month we've just been going to these really small supermercados because those are usually the ones by the water but they also are a bit more expensive and don't have a lot of options they don't have a lot of items and we really wanted to do a big shop and uh, get a lot of stuff because we're running pretty low on some staples so we looked for a bigger shopping center and there's a train actually right here the train station is literally right behind where we're anchored and uh one stop over was this big supermarket so we thought that's perfect you know we can do that super easily so we hopped on the train it was late to begin with so we hopped on the train we got there and 
the supermarket was literally a hundred meters from the train station. So we, you know, looking at it on maps, we were like, this is perfect. But there was no way to exit the train station on that side. There was no tunnel and there was a huge fence and there was literally no way. So we had to walk a whole kilometer around. And I mean, a kilometer is not a lot, obviously, but it was just so hot and there was no sidewalk. So we were just kind of like on this highway sort of thing. So then we got to the shopping center. We got all of our groceries, which was fantastic. We spent 250 euros on groceries, which is the most we've spent, but we got a lot of stuff that'll last us for a while, which feels really good. And then, yeah, we just waited around for the train to come home and uh, walked, walked back down to the beach. And here we are, now we're gonna put everything away. So all in all, it was a good mission, albeit a tiring one. And I think we're going to enjoy dinner tonight very much. So with the boat full of food and our head full of incredible memories, we headed off to our next Sicilian port of call, Syracuse. Join us next time as we do more sailing, explore one of my personal favorite cities in Sicily, and sail beneath the electrically charged sky of a lightning storm. As always, a giant, giant thank you to our patrons. You guys have changed our lives in so many ways and we just cannot say thank you enough. An extra big thank you to these folks who go above and beyond in making these videos a reality. And of course, thank you to you viewers because without you, none of this would exist either. And we will see you in the next episode.